46.3 million Americans live in food deserts. And almost double that, over 50 million Americans live economically distressed, meaning that they're disconnected from the innovation economy and this boom that we're having in the United States. I know about food deserts firsthand because for seven years, I was the chief popsicle of feverish ice cream and gourmet pops. A company that I founded with my awesome and really cute husband <laughs> after falling down chasing an ice cream truck in heels. <laughs> you saw how careful I was coming down those steps, right? <laughs> Who does that but me? <laughs> Providing and manufacturing healthy treats and bringing those to neighborhoods and people that are disconnected from food deserts. Vegan-friendly popsicles, and I won't take too much time talking about them, but every now and then, we'd put a little alcohol in those pops, right? <laughs> I now work as the co-founder and executive director of Code Fever in Miami, and the founder and co I'm sorry, co-founder of Black Tech Week with my husband. And we are on a mission to rid our communities across the United States of innovation deserts. 50 million people in the United States are disconnected from the innovation economy. What can we do about that? What should we do about that? I used to play basketball. I played basketball for a pretty long time. Uh, you can tell by my height a little bit, right? I got a job in the WNBA uh, as a marketing manager in the for the Minnesota Lynx. So I never actually like, I know, go Minnesota, right? I never actually made it to the leagues, but because I was able to work for them in marketing, I take that as like a win, right? Like, I feel like I got drafted in some sort of way. But my high school basketball coach would always say, you're only as strong as your weakest player. And our communities, our cities, our blocks, our neighborhoods, our countries are only as strong as our weakest people. And so what can each and every one of us do to rid our communities of innovation deserts? Through the work that we've done with Black Tech Week, a national convening based in Miami that brings people of color from all over the globe to Miami to celebrate innovators of color, but most importantly, connect them to the resources so they can be active participants and financial beneficiaries of the innovation economy. Through our study, the Economic Development and Inclusive Innovation Report that we've done with our organization, we've come up with a few key things that we think are important when we talk about innovating and ridding our communities of innovation deserts. The first thing is innovation hubs and co-working spaces in these communities that are disconnected, that I don't like to deem impoverished communities, but low opportunities communities. We know these collision points and what they can provide to these communities as a catalyst for innovative conversation, but most importantly, innovative activity. It's disheartening that if you want to be an active participant and be involved in tech, get tech training, advance your career opportunities, be an active participant in the innovation economy, and not as a service worker, right, driving a car or delivering food, but as an active participant that you have to leave your home, you have to leave your neighborhood, you have to leave your block, and none of these resources are with arm's reach. That's a problem, and that's a problem that I definitely want us to fix, but it starts with having these places and these convening places and these innovation hubs within our com communities where this kind of activity takes place on an ongoing basis and it allows us to thrive. It also starts with changing the narrative of what innovation is or who an innovator is. There's kind of a stereotypical mold of what we think an innovator is, and that's a problem. Because if we don't think that someone that looks like me, right, or a woman, or someone from an LGBT community, right, or someone from an indigenous community, or an immigrant is an innovator, that group, those group, lack a certain kind of resource magnetism that is extremely important for them to be able to excel in the innovation economy. The other conversation that we don't often have around innovation and inclusive innovation and ridding communities of innovation deserts is policy. Right? So often we immediately go to, we need to do coding training and we need to find jobs. And we're not looking at it from a top-down approach. Oftentimes this activity is bottom-up. 
right? Grassroots organizations are working really hard, and both of those have to be able to meet in, th in the middle and provide some policy, redirect redirecting funds and resources, working with community re redevelopment agencies to be able to build these spaces, house this kind of programming, and foster the innovation. We've been fortunate enough in Miami to be able to be funded by the Knight Foundation to do this work. Miami was an innovation desert four years ago when we first started, especially as it relates to the African American, Caribbean, and the low income Hispanic community. Most people think about Miami as this bustling area. It's one of the leading or, um, cities when you talk about entrepreneurial growth, but it has 13 targeted urban areas that were innovation deserts, and we have to do something about that. And it starts with policy. It also starts with creating asset maps, right? So there's all these resources that currently exist in cities that people are disconnected from because they don't know how to navigate that. So the strength of a community when you're truly committed to making sure that your innovation and your resources and those opportunities are spread across everyone in your community, it has to, it has to have an asset map for specific groups that allows them to easily map out their mobility within that space. They should understand how to go from uh, the idea to success and be able to map that out with the resources that make sense for them. VC and residents, or residence programs. This is something that we launched to solve a major problem with the entrepreneurs that we were working with, is around funding. And not having access to funding for minority entrepreneurs. And not just the funding pools, but most VCs aren't meeting with you unless someone that they know and trust introduces you. And so what happens if you don't even have that person to introduce you to that person? You're completely disconnected from the funding. In our organization, in our office, we always joke around and say, what if your friends and family can only give you a round of applause and not a round of funding, right? <laughs> what do you do? But the same thing happens with your community, right? And we can't joke about that. What if your community can only give you a round of applause and say, good job, good luck. You may not have all the resources, but we expect you to succeed just the same. And so we have to challenge our communities that we live in to be more supportive and provide wraparound services for our entrepreneurs, and not just uh, minority entrepreneurs, but rural areas as well, because they are disconnected from the innovation economy. Innovation funds. There are some communities across the United States that do a really good job of that. You think of Ohio with the Jumpstart Fund, you think of Detroit with Invest Detroit, you think of what's going on in Atlanta, but I have to admit, even where I live, there's not an innovation fund for high growth minority companies in the tech space or launching startups. And that's a problem. And we can do a much greater job if we want to build and foster innovative companies. They need funding. They need the luxury to be able to innovate. They need to make sure that basic Maslow's needs are met so that they can actually innovate. That takes time. That takes money that takes resources, and that takes a really true commitment. Another thing that we can do when we talk about government, local, state, and federal, and we talk about organizations, and most importantly, we talk about how major corporations in our communities can play a major role, outside of funding from angel and VC funding and innovation funds, are procurement opportunities, right? The best thing that a business can have and a startup can have is customers, right? And contracts. And this is an easier pull sometimes than creating an innovation fund. And this is something that we can definitely do on a local level to make sure that those contracts are there. Make sure that we're matching budding startup founders with opportunities within these corporations. Value is another thing and one of the most important things that we have to understand. We have to cr increase the way that our marginalized communities are valued within the innovation economy and at the same time add value to the innovation economy. To me, this is one of the bottom line issues with the innovation deserts that we have, is we don't value these people as contrib contributors within this space. We don't understand the long history that marginalized groups have had as innovators and in solving problems out of necessity. My family's from Jamaica, my mom's from Jamaica, and in Jamaica we have something called the Judah Taxi. Right? And the Judah taxi, you pay about $2 to go from point A to point B. A ton of people pile into these vans, right? 
Safety is kind of completely out the window, but that's another story. In Miami, in the little Haiti area, we have something called the Jitney Taxi. The Jitney Taxi is 30 years old. The utility of those two companies in Jamaica, in the Caribbean, here in the United States, one, solving a transportation issue, but two, the same utility is no different than Uber Pool. Right? Solving a transportation issue, people piling in with strangers, paying a few dollars to go from point A to point B. With the right resources in the communities, with the right deal flow in the communities. It's not for a lack of ideas, because this guy essentially created Uber Pool 30 years ago. We can make sure that we are building communities that are strong, that are innovative, and raise the potential and the capacity for competitive, competitiveness, oh my gosh, right, I didn't get my coffee, in the United States if we make sure that we are ridding communities of innovation deserts. Thank you.